Natural history and science need story. Outdoor Radio unites the sounds and science of nature in this monthly feature on Vermont Public Radio. I'm going to quickly share with you how and why the idea came about and what I've learned about science communication so far while doing this show. Once upon a time, a long time ago, remember, science needs story. At the beginning of the 20th century, with her popular new book on nature study in hand, Anna Comstock, the first female professor at Cornell University, started an era of natural history study among schools. This was a time when arithmetic, reading, writing, and nature study were all taught in schools. The nature study area produced greats such as Aldo Leopold and Rachel Carson. But beginning in the 1950s and 1960s, natural history study began to fade from the curriculum from middle school and high schools to universities and colleges. We now find ourselves in the screen age, where natural history knowledge by the general public is at perhaps an all-time low. Brian Pfeiffer, my good friend, colleague, and my science communications guru, and I have seen this firsthand. One day, after a call-in radio show featuring insects, Brian hatched an idea. Why not create a short radio show about natural history and science that reached out to more people, perhaps not just the choir, as they drove to work listening to the radio, a captive audience. A pitch was made to VPR and a plan was hatched. Sarah Zahendra and I teamed up with Chris Albertine, a seasoned audio story magician. We quickly found we had a lot to learn from Chris. We were AAA storytellers. And then, and then, and then, on a rainy night in April, the salamander crawled from underground, and then it went to a vernal pool, and then the males danced in the pool to entice females, and then they picked up spermatophores, and then everyone fell asleep. Chris kept telling us the old adage, we need a beginning, a middle, and an end. But what the heck does that really mean? We started to catch on that science needed a story. Scientist turned filmmaker Randy Olson termed it, and, but, therefore. On a rainy night in April, the salamander crawled from underground, and then it went to a vernal pool and mated. But, one scientist has found that vernal pools contain methyl mercury from atmospheric deposition, and the salamanders are accumulating it in their bodies. Therefore, we have to find out if this harms the salamanders, and if so, can we lower emissions and clean up the vernal pools? ABT narrative structure is hard. It takes a lot of practice. And sometimes on our show, well, we come up a bit short. But we know it can create those driveway moments that capture people's attention. Do you have a story to tell about your research outside? We'd like to help you tell it. Check out Outdoor Radio and give us a ring and we'll help you with your story.